Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm going to be testing a webcam. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a very different video from the usual. Well, I'm still going to play some games at the end of it, but still. All right, guys, now I'm recording with the Obsbot Tiny 2. You can see the quality here. It's recording 4K 30 frames per second, which is the maximum quality that it allows. And it looks pretty damn nice, doesn't it? Like, you can see a little bit of background blur over here for example not as much as my thousand dollar camera but you know it's a third of the price and it's a webcam and it's smart so uh, you know it's a little bit better in some ways <laughs> and talking about price this costs 329 us dollars or 309 euros that's a bit too much for a webcam but considering all of the smart things it does it's actually not too bad Let's take a look. First things first, you can control it using voice commands like track me, track me, tiny track me, track me. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I managed to make it work and let's take a look at the tracking capabilities of this thing. Since we are here, you know, like it's pretty nice actually. Look at this. Not bad, eh? Not bad! <laughs> Unlock me. See that? That's how you do it. It's pretty nice. I really like this, guys. <laughs> this thing is the future of webcams. You can also ask it to zoom in closer. I swear, I actually thought it was going to work properly, but again, sometimes the voice commands don't work right away. But you know what you can also use to control the camera? Gestures. You don't even need to say zoom in closer, you just do this. See that? And now, magic will happen. You can zoom in with your fingers. How crazy is that? And by the way, it zooms in up to four times digital zoom, which is what you're seeing right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not great, but you know, considering it's digital zoom and the webcam, it's not terrible. And by the way, the FOV of this is 85.5 degrees and you can set it wherever you want, of course. The quality itself is pretty nice, you know, for, for 4K on, on such a tiny little uh, camera here. But let's go back to the widest over here and talk about the fourth thing that you can use to control this camera. This... Wait, why did you zoom in? <laughs> what? <laughs> but this is the Obsbot Tiny Smart Remote 2. And I didn't click anything this time around, like... It must be one of the voice controls, guys. <laughs> See, you can be talking about some things and then it changes the camera angles and stuff like that. But yeah, this is their tiny smart remote too and it works really well with this camera. Unfortunately, you have to buy this separately, but uh, yeah, it's seamless. You just press the buttons, you can control the camera like this up and down. You can also set it to track you around. You know, yeah, basically all of the stuff that you can do with voice and so on, you can do right here and it's just a few clicks away and uh, it's instant as well. So it works quite well, this remote. And this is how I would personally use this. But if you don't want to buy it, the software is probably the second way to go. Talking about the camera itself, it has a large sensor for its size at 1 over 1.5 inches. And it's the biggest sensor in a webcam, actually, at least by what they said. It has a wide f1.9 aperture and it records up to 4K video at 30 frames per second. It can also do up to 60 FPS at lower resolutions like 1080p or 1920 by 1440, which is 1440p at 3 by 2 or something like that. In terms of focusing, and I got my GTX 690 again for that, nice. It's actually not too slow compared to my thousand dollar camera. It's actually faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> from what I'm seeing right here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty quick how to focus actually, guys. You can also use it in manual focus mode, by the way, if you want that. But yeah, that's pretty nice out of focus, not gonna lie. Wow. And finally, it can also record HDR video. Let's talk microphones now. So the camera is roughly an arm's length away from me. It has two omnidirectional microphones and everything that you're hearing right now is from those mics right there. 
It doesn't sound amazing, but it's definitely passable if you want to do like a little meeting or something. And this is what it sounds like with a fan on. That's a pretty loud fan, so I'm curious to see what the noise reduction microphones can do about it. For charging, you can use the USB-C cable that comes in the box, and it also comes with a small USB-A to USB-C adapter. If you don't have any USB-C uh, ports available in your laptop or in your PC, for example, it also comes with a little carrying case, which I do like, and the magnetic mount that you can use to put it on top of your monitor, for example, like I have right now. And finally, before we go play a game, I just want to show you some of the features here with in the software. Let's go. Okay, we're in the desktop now with a video preview as well as the software on the right. And uh, yeah, we're using the 4K 30 FPS right now. I've been using this to record everything that you saw up until now. You can take some screenshots if you want to while recording. They'll show up right here. And uh, yeah, beautiful, right? Look at this one. Oh yes. <laughs> now they say that this is a 50 megapixel sensor, but the pictures that you take from it, at least here in this software, are 4K, 3840 by 2160 resolution. On the bottom left, you have all of the resolutions available, as well as the frame rates, 60 FPS there, if I want to do 1080p, like 60. It's a little bit smoother. It's quite choppy sometimes. I wonder if that's something to do with the camera being quite hot to the touch. Maybe it's just a defect on my end, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh, select the 4K30 again and uh, go over all of these settings here. So first up, we got this one. This is just the preview. Enabling or disabling the preview. There we go. Uh, this is putting it to sleep, okay? If I select this, the camera will shut down basically and look down and show you a black screen. We don't want that. And now it's really up there, isn't it? So I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the gimbal to reposition it. That's much better. You can use this to do whatever you want. If you want to take a look at the laptop on my right, for example, there it is. Very nice. The microphone recording. Oh, it's quite nice, actually. You can see everything that I'm doing. All right, the, the GTX 690, a motherboard that I was testing previously. That's the i7-4770K under there. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Oh yeah, you also got a desk mode, which is not gonna show up properly right now. It's gonna try with software trickery still. Okay, so I have put it on the middle now and adjusted it a little bit more so you can see the desk better. I'm gonna click desk mode. And uh, there we go. That's much better than over there in that corner, like th this corner. Yes. So yeah, now you can see my mouse. You can see that I'm not cheating and stuff. It's very nice. <laughs> and you can do unboxings and stuff like that. GTX 690 here. It looks a little bit stretched out, actually. Uh, because of the software trickery that it's doing, but it's doing a decent job, you know? If you just want to show something on your desk, this works quite well, in my opinion. Oh yeah, and you can also have these very interesting modes right here, which are for a certain type of creator, let's say that. Imagine you want to not show your, your head while you're recording your, um, yeah. <laughs> your shirt for sure or like you want to show your lower body for some reason you can also do that close up what is a close close up of what my microphone my head okay well this doesn't seem like a close up to me but okay <laughs> you can also see your upper body right which is probably what you want in a streaming device like this one or if you want to use it for streaming and uh, down here again it's the gimbal you can adjust the zoom levels and stuff um, right now it's tracking so let's just stop tracking and do this again four times there we go okay what else do we have here ai mode desk mode we have already seen that whiteboard it will probably just uh, Oh, this is, this is not a whiteboard. Okay, well, <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, well, I, I guess you could say it's a white keyboard, right? <laughs> and uh, you got the hand if you want to follow your hand, you know, like so. 
That's pretty nice actually, that is the camera that I usually use <laughs> and I use for b-roll in this video as well. You can follow a group, uh, so it tries to keep everyone in frame. Uh, right now it's just me, as usual, because I'm very lonely. And again, as I showed you, you got the wide, medium and narrow views right here. All right, so let's just reset everything. Why did it reset, right? I don't understand. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Image quality here. You got the autofocus, which you can set to manual focus or auto. Definitely use auto, by the way. Okay, just gonna reposition this. <laughs> Don't know why it went there. Back to the image stuff. I want the autofocus in my face, but you can do global autofocus. You can set the exposure and shutter speed. Obviously, it's gonna be a faster shutter. Oh boy. Uh, wait. <laughs> Like you can see that there is much less motion blur right now with this shutter speed than it was than there was with auto, but you know, just for normal stuff, I'll leave it at auto. Was it on auto before? I, I don't think so, right? Interesting. Now it's much brighter than before. Anyway, that's the exposure right there, anti-flicker. If you see some light flickering and stuff like that, you can also mess around with these settings to get rid of it. There's the white balance, which set to default doesn't really look that great. I look super yellow at the moment, so that's probably why I chose to not leave it on auto. And then down here, you got the normal stuff, contrast, saturation and stuff like that. Look at that, it can go really, really saturated or just black and white. Uh, the contrast, eh, the contrast is not really as intense as the saturation was for sure. You also got sharpness right here. Yeah, I can definitely see a lot of sharpening happening at 100%. I guess 50 is a good middle ground. And the hue. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be Hulk, well, you can be it with this little camera, guys making your wildest dreams come true. <laughs> then you got beauty mode, speaking of wildest dreams. Background blur. Ooh, well, yeah, it's not great, you know. Then you got retouch, native. Classic. Oh boy, what is it doing to my face, dude? Look at that. Oh. I, I look way prettier, what the hell? Men, finally it's making me a man. Look at this. It's not too different. Well, I guess that's because I am a man. Yeah. Anyway, body slim. That's interesting. What the? Oh, it's so weird. It makes my head bigger so my body can be slim. I don't understand. I don't even know which one is the right one right now. What? <laughs> no, wait, 100 makes me, yeah, makes my head slimmer, okay. Oh my gosh, so weird. Well, you can see my legs, so that's, that's it. I don't have legs, obviously. This will be nice. Doesn't do anything. No, I really wanted bigger shoulders. <sighs> the one filter that I wanted. <laughs> anyway, head, okay. That's the same thing as body slim for some reason. Then you got filters, if you like that stuff. Well, this looks kind of decent, actually. Okay. Yep, all of that and more. <laughs> These are the sleep settings, disable or enable the voice controls and gestures and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you can, you can control all of that stuff from here, which is quite nice. But yeah, that's about it for this section of the video. We've went through pretty much all that there is in their software. It's uh, quite complete in my opinion. I really like some of the things that they got going on, especially the fact that they allow you to set the exposure and the white balance and the contrast levels and so on. It's pretty nice. And now let's play a game and put it to the real world test, shall we, my friends? Finally, <laughs> let's have fun. All right, guys, what we're playing here is Cyberbug 2077 with ray tracing overdrive DLSS on auto, which means performance at the 4K resolution that we're using. Frame generation is turned on. And yeah, overdrive is just path tracing, which is super, super demanding. And that's why we need DLSS performance for it to be playable on the RTX 4080. But yeah, why Cyberbug, I hear you ask? Well, it's because we get to kill Bob, and I, I just 
have that urge, you know. You, you, you guys know what I mean if you have played this game. You always need to kill Bob every once in a while to make yourself feel better. And here he is. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> that was a nice flight. I liked that. <laughs> he didn't die, though. Where is he? Is it, is it this one? I think so. No, no, that's not a Bob, is it? I, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I think, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna get out, make sure he's dead, you know, because this is the only reason why I am playing this. He's not dead. Goodbye, Bob. Again, now he is. And now we are free to proceed with our benchmark run. Getting 60-ish frames per second. Unfortunately, the reflections don't look anything special at the performance DLSS. But, you know, it's pretty anyways. And there is some major input lag because of the frame generation, let's say that. Yeah, 70 FPS is feeling like a 30 FPS input lag, basically. The smoothness is there, though, like the 70 FPS smoothness, you can feel it, it's not 30 Hz, but the input lag is still there, so it kills the experience a little bit honestly yes that's it for this one guys <laughs> i'm gonna have a bigger cyberpunk video testing overdrive rt with the rtx 4080 soon in the channel this is just a taste <laughs> and it's just so we can see how this webcam would look like uh, on the bottom of the screen where i usually have it and uh, well i think it will look pretty good because 4k uh, maybe the colors will be a little bit too saturated for my liking but uh, you can always adjust that so thanks very much guys for watching this video thanks to obsbot as well for sending this webcam for review it's pretty nice bit expensive though i'd like to see the price drop on that but you know i think uh, it's the king of webcams basically what we're looking at uh, so there's that of course it's going to be expensive Maybe in some years' time we'll have this kind of quality on a webcam for a bit better of a price. Uh, still, if you are interested in buying this... Damn it, I died. Well, we got 69 on average, that's amazing. Um, I'll have a link down below in the description. It's an affiliate link, just so you know. And yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.